days. Well, welcome to um, another session of Black History Conversations. Um, we've uh, just been chatting the group who have joined us today, um, and we've got, got folks from all over, so maybe we'll do some general introductions later. Um, but just to say that today, a uh, very special session, we had a wonderful session last week, and this week it's really going to be a really brilliant session because we're going to find out about um, the book Little River that's just been launched by Dr. Velma McClymont. So um, we're just going to um, uh, move on through now. I'm Liz Millman from Learning Links International and a couple of my colleagues are here from Learning Links International, Natalie Fagan-Brown and um, Marcia Dunkley. So uh, we, we welcome you. We've got uh, Simon Faringo from um, Belong Nottingham who's uh, doing the uh, behind the scenes things, but make sure the session goes okay. And we have apologies from David Alston um, from up in Scotland, who's not able to join us today and he's very much looking forward to listening to the recording. Okay, so I acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which I'm currently living here in Australia, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, their elders, past, present and future. This land belongs to the sovereign people of the First Nations. It was never ceded. It always was, and it always will be, Aboriginal land. So thank you. The acknowledgement is something that, that um, I can do. Um, and uh, in all meetings here, the meetings start with an acknowledgement, or if it's somebody from the um, Aboriginal community, then they will um, do the welcome to country. Okay, so we've got a black history quote here. I said we do one every week and I'm delighted if people send them. This one says, history is not neutral, no matter how much some academics may pretend it is. We all have baggage and agenda, which impacts to some degree on the way we interpret, teach, or regurgitate history. This African proverb underscores the point. Until the lions tell their tale, History shall always glorify the hunter. We often hear that proverb used in terms of te telling the stories of black history. So now we're going to just remember that last week, many, many thanks go to Vivian Crawford, Executive Director of the Institute of Jamaica, who reflected on his Grace Kennedy Foundation annual lecture. It's an absolutely fantastic session. Um, and your lecture, which um, we've got links to, Jamaica, Tangible Inn and Tangible Heritage, so much to tell, was a really, really interesting um, uh, session. So that was great. So this week then, we've got uh, welcoming uh, Dr. Velma McClymont, who, uh, Right, sometimes, I think you see children's books, Velma, as Kate Elizabeth Ernest. So, born in rural Jamaica, St Anne, I think. Um, Dr McClymont joined her parents in London during the 1960s. Um, as so many children must have been then, Velma, and we'll be talking about this again, you were left behind and then you were um, uh, um, asked to join your parents. So that's uh, a story for our next sessions perhaps when we're looking at stories of the Windrush generation. She attended Notre Dame Roman Catholic High School in Battersea and was also a member of Lavender Hill Library where you appeared as a visiting author during the 50th anniversary of Windrush in June 1998. Now as a former Wandsworth resident you published four books, um, Hope Leaves Jamaica, Festus and Felix, Birds in the Wilderness and Tricky Tricky Twins. Hope and Birds are classed as Windrush books. So maybe that would be something that would be interesting for us to look at um, uh, in, in our next few weeks while we're, we're tracking the time that it took for Empire Windrush to leave Jamaica and then arrive in Tilbury. We know there have been many years since then, but anyway, um, uh, Velma is currently writing, well, she's currently written the first part of a feminist historical novel, and that's what we're going to be hearing about today. 
So as a writer, poet, storyteller, community activist, and international speaker, uh, Vilma has spoken in Austria, Scotland, including in the Scottish Parliament, Wales in Cardiff, Southern Ireland, England, America, and Jamaica. As a first class honours student, she's a recipient of an Economic and Social Research Council scholarship and lectured in Caribbean studies. She's taught creative writing for adults and has also worked in local government as a government development manager, community development manager, as well as in banking at the Bank of England. Well, there's a few stories been coming out lately about the Bank of England's links with the slave trade. So uh, I don't know if you were involved in research there. As a philanthro activist, Dr. McClymont believes in giving back to her community. Hence, she's a fellow of the African yes. Forum in Scotland, an ambassador for peace, the Universal Peace Federation, a member of the Journey to Justice, an ambassador for the Nubian Jack Foundation, a patron of the Diaspora Movement Matters in Dublin, and a patron of Decolonizing the Archive. Oh, great. Right, we've got lots to say about you. So um, you're determined to improve outcomes for black children and their families. So you set up the former African and Caribbean Learning and Heritage Centre, completely self-funded. And in addition, you're a patron of many faith and community organisations in London, Scotland, Southampton, uh, Southern Ireland and in Kenya, the Faith, Hope and Smiles charity. Great name. Building on this work, she's recently set up Woman's View, a virtual discussion forum comprising scholars, experts and business people in order to share knowledge and empower women. And it would be great also to hear um, Vilma uh, a little bit more about Woman's View because it was established at the same time as we established Black History Conversations after George Floyd's murder. And um, I think uh, there's, there's things in common, there's certainly things that we can learn from you, having had a look at the website. Um, now, you're also known as, as the writer Katie Elizabeth Ernest, and we've talked about the books you published, and you also featured on Channel 4's Junior Geography for Schools, and, and also in Birds in the Wilderness, telling the story of the Windrush children coming to England in the 1960s. That's really interesting. Then this, that book was shortlisted for the Sheffield Children's Book Award and voted Book of the Year by the Jamaica Library Association in 1998. And we say here about the other, the other books here, I think there's an, a pub, um, a, your anthology of short stories, Dear Mum, Don't Panic and Fiction. I hope I'm reading this right. Now, as I said, moved by the brutal murder of George Floyd and the impact of COVID-19 on the black community and Black Lives Matter protests, um, Dr. McClymont wrote a collection of lockdown poems, a publication and an article on chattel slavery, sea churches in Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So we need to get the link for that. And you're also you've been working on this historical novel. And this week, the first volume of this novel was launched on Zoom and I was honoured to be invited to be a part of that launch um, event, um, which was in the middle of the night for me here in Australia, but I managed it and it was absolutely fantastic. I was riveted right the way through and right to the end. So thank you very much indeed for that. It was a fantastic <laughs> event. I've made this slide and it's off four screens full of people. So you certainly know how to do your promotion and publicity and that's something we can learn from you, I'm sure. But you had folks from all over the world, including Kofi Tete um, from Cape Coast Castle. Um, it was a difficult link, but it was so moving that he was actually speaking there. Now, you, the book that, that you've, you've uh, now published and is available through Woman's View, and I've ordered a copy, but it'll take a long time to get here, I'm sure. Um, Little River, and this is volume one, and this is what you're going to tell us about. So I think, um, do you want me to read this through, Velma, or do you want to uh, tell us about it yourself? In I, your think, own I think I'll tell you about it. Can you hear me? Do I need to get any closer? 
You're fine. I can hear you. So welcome. This is absolutely wonderful. I'm really, really delighted to welcome you. So over to you, Dr. Velma McClymont. Okay. Now this this one is not um, for, shall we say, for sale. So I'm literally, as you see, like everybody else who gets hold of a book and you start to read and making notes down the side, here it is. And um, this won't be on the front of the, um, the book you'll be getting, this bit here. It says a historical novel about the Scottish sugar barons in Jamaica. Needless to say, um, this book really came about because in 1999, so let me begin with that. Little River first is a real place up in the hills of St. Anne. It's actually um, a place, all these Scottish names as you can imagine up there in the hills. So um, this is a, it's a place called McDowell and from McDowell it's the source of the river but the river has dried up over the centuries but it was there and here along this colonial walkway, you can't really see it all much. The old stone walls, most people will remember them. Every now and again, you'll be walking and you will see water springing up from the ground. You know the river has just gone on the ground, right? So that's that. So in 1999, I rushed off to Jamaica to look after my, I call her my beloved grandmother because I always thought she was my mother until one day, I realized I had a mother in England and I, I didn't really like that and never really liked it anyway. Um, as much as I tried, my grandmother was really my mother. And so I rushed to Jamaica to look after her. While in Jamaica, I met Reverend Delroy Sittle, who um, a former teacher from Claude McKay High School in Clarendon. I couldn't believe it because McKay is my absolute favorite writer in all the world. So he said, wow, I'll take you there. Well, people, I went to Claude McKay's, um, the church where the family worshiped, Mount Zion Baptist Church. I went to the school, exchanged Hopley's Jamaica, my book, for a copy of my Green Hills of Jamaica. So you can see the nod to McKay. Right, so this is Clarendon though, but this is St. Anne. From there, I went to the house where McKay grew up in Sunnyville, little place, it's in James Hill. My camera broke and I said, I, I was very cross because the people in the house, the young people came out, oh, we don't remember, so one was scratching her head actually. Oh, we don't remember somebody famous did live here. I nearly passed out. I said, right, I got to do something. I have been trying to do things to reach the Minister of Culture, everybody in Jamaica. So Vivian, you and I are going to talk because Claude McKay's house, that house has to become a heritage site. Now my camera broke and I said, Claude McKay, what is it you want from me? Anyway, I stood on the bridge, the Suki River Bridge people, hence my pen name also is Suki River. And I recited um, so much of I Forgotten in 10 Years. I won't tell you something hair raising for another time. Got home, following morning, Marcus Garvey's birthday. I'm gonna try and keep that short, but you need to know, because he's my muse. Marcus Garvey's birthday, I'm invited to St. Anne's Bay Library, obviously to speak about um, Garvey and my book. Well, the one which, um, the Library Association voted book of the year in 98. I woke up, believe it or not, Claude McKay came and gave me an empty plate decorated with the poinsettia flowers around the rim. I thought, what is this? What do I do, what do, I do with a plate? And as the morning wore on, I'm getting dressed. I'm thinking in my head about Garvey, all his quotes, everything. I said, this can't be right. I'm taking McKay's book with me. I said to the librarian, Mrs. Annette Redway at the time, who told me my book was book of the year, the year before. I said, this is what has happened. So I'm sorry, I can't talk about Garvey today. I got to talk about McKay. And the audience, I said, most people in Jamaica there in St. Anne at the library in St. Anne's Bay had forgotten McKay. I couldn't believe it. So we photocopied all his poems as we could from 
here, we spent over an hour on McKay and they loved it. Came back, forgot about McKay, won a, a scholarship, if you like, to do my doctorate. Claude McKay comes again. He gives me an empty sheet of paper, lined paper. And I'm thinking, what am I supposed to do with this? I, I thought about it and I went away, do, did my research. And, and then as I was writing up my research, I'm coming across all these white women writers writing nonsense about black women, you know, enslaved black women. And I thought, I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to write back to these women. And so lo and behold, I started writing the novel at the same time, but didn't have the time. And in 2011, Claude McKay comes again and he's in a library in New York. So you're not hearing much about the book, you're hearing about the making of Little River. McKay comes back to me again, he's in a library in New York and he's just looking for a book. I'm thinking, I need his autograph, but he won't look at me. I woke up and that was the 31st of December, 2011. I thought, I gotta go to America. Off I went to America in February. I thought, what's happening in America? I looked, I saw the National Black Writers Conference. I, I literally just wrote and said, I've got to come to this conference. They said, right, we're booking you. When you come, you pay, sort everything out. At the conference, I met T. Russell Murray, who is the curator of the African-American burial ground in Lower Manhattan. If anybody on this call has been there by Wall Street. Murray took me around. And I wept, I thought I was gonna break down. And I saw the museum, then the door of no return, which Kofi, remember Cape Castle, Cape Coast Castle. I wept and I put my silver coins on the mound. It's too much of a history, I have to look it up. And I told the ancestors, inspire me to write this book. I, I went back to my apartment in Brooklyn and I just went mad writing chapter two, the African Empress, which is the ship. I had no intention of going to Africa people, West Africa to Nigeria to do a Sankofa bit. I found myself obviously writing in this compound with Chief Jamoke and his 16 wives and his children, the extended family. And then the, the white slavers come, the breakup. And then I bring you back to Jamaica on the ship because I'm writing back to Anna Maria Falconbridge, the only white woman on a slaver who said that it wasn't so bad after all. And I thought, what nonsense. So I decided to do something about it. In the meantime, I have five Scottish surnames, people. McClymont, Morris, Smith. Um, my mother was Jackson. Her people are Grahams, as well as Fitzgerald. Six, beg your pardon. So I decided I'm going to have to go to Scotland. And in between this, I've since been to Scotland seven times, walked up and down Merchant City everywhere. You know, the Cunningham building. And as I'm in Scotland, I'm getting really cross. I'm thinking Scotland has really benefited from us. Scotland owes us. So I'm talking everywhere in Scotland, this lone black woman, Professor Sir Tom Devine, refuses to talk about reparations in public. So I stand up, this lone black woman, and he's like, who is she? And I said, listen, I was born in the hills of St. Anne. I've been to Barbados, you know, up at Cave Hill. I've been to St. Lucia, Rodney Bay. You know, the lookout point at Rodney Bay. I stood there where Admiral Rodney stood. So of course he's in the book, um, you know, the mention. And I said, I am six generations removed from slavery. I'm asking you to talk about reparations. He went on about Robert Burns and of course I said no I'd like you to talk about reparations so as a result 2014 I came back from Scotland and really sat down and I thought I've got to write this book so I sent it off to publishers and I was getting all these rejections back but long letters we love this book we love the characters we love the settings we love everything but we don't feel it's for us because nobody was touching slavery you see they just wouldn't touch it and so in the end I said to myself 
right, I'm not doing this anymore. Garvey says you must own the means of production. He talks about, you know, the literary side, not just literary. And so I thought George Floyd died, murdered, the world turned upside down, Black Lives Matter. And suddenly I had to really think the time has come to do something for yourself. Back home they say, do for yourself. And I said, I'm going to set up something and publish this book myself. And in the meantime, people, I'll have you know, on Christmas day, just gone, Claude McKay came back. I haven't got the picture of him in his little white shirt and his mustache. He just looked at me and smiled. And I said, Claude McKay is satisfied. The book is finished and it's time to come out. So it is a gift to the Jamaican people from Claude McKay, not just Claude McKay, Trust me, those old time people in the hills of St. Anne wouldn't leave me alone when I was writing this book. If I, and I've also been to Rose Hall, the point of Worthy Park out there in Clarendon. I have been to, you know, Heritage Park in Jamaica. I have been to Farley Hill in Barbados. And of course I've been to St. Lucia, Pigeon Island. I don't know if anybody has been there at Rodney Bay, where you look out. It's just a little island where the British soldiers' redcoats were stationed with Admiral Rodney. So naturally, you're going to get your dashing British redcoats soldiers hunting the Maroons in here. So anything you can think of about Jamaica, not just Jamaica, the Fedon Revolt, the Berbice Rebellion, anything that's going on in the Caribbean, the planters will talk about it because this is also about conspicuous consumption. It's how the, the notion of transculturation, how the British transported their culture to the Caribbean. But remember, it is Africa in the Caribbean as well. So you're going to get African retention and how in terms of, so we will be looking at naming, how your name's taken away, but you will be hearing. It will develop more in, in volume two. So you will hear the midwife in here is a priestess, Monifa, right? It means I am lucky and she's kidnapped at 10. So you're gonna see how she's the mile woman in, so, sorry, she's the Kumina woman in here. And then you are gonna get um, Mileism, but you will only hear on a woman's deathbed because those are African retention. Then you're going to get the Reverend McKay, the Church of Scotland. Then you're going to get Church of England because you're going to see how religion is used to control the mind and how to kill off African culture and, and your belief system. But you will see how Monifa or how you know, you will only see one instance, if you like, of possession in here. And so you'll hear about the American War of Independence and we will get that scout, Black Scout, Black Jack from America. Because you're gonna be hearing about Britain all the time, the Black Loyalist, et cetera, Liz, Royalist, who fought. You're gonna hear about Equiana. So you will hear about everybody, Sancho, Everybody who did something in the 18th century will be mentioned. Thomas Thistlewood people, if you've heard of Thistlewood, his journals, Thistlewood is sitting at the dinner table. I can't even find the page. He sits at the dinner table and bits are taken from his journal, only three extracts. So when I've used quotations from anywhere, I will put them in his italics. The Zong people, you will hear about the Zong because I'm a former lecturer in Caribbean studies and I taught film and literature. So obviously I taught Sankofa and I taught, what's the other film, um, Amistad and such. So when you are reading about the slave ship, remember I've already wept for Amistad. I've already wept over Sankofa. So the book is about retrieving, going to Africa, retrieving, but it's about Scotland the rise of the Scottish sugar barons in Jamaica, the money they make, it's also part of the epistolary tradition. Occasionally, there is a letter home to Scotland, remittances people, how the money has been sent back to 
to Scotland. When people retire to Murray Place in Edinburgh or whatever, I have been there, been to Edinburgh Castle, stood there looking down on the city, the toll gate. So most of the places I've been, and here you can't see it, but Vivian, you should know, up in St. Anne, we have our own Edinburgh Castle, which was built by Louis Hutchison, apparently the last white man to be hanged in Jamaica. The murderer, uh, the murderer. Yes, my family owned 43 acres of the Edinburgh estate. I saw the papers. My grandmother had the papers in 99. I wish I'd taken them. So Louis Hutchison, you're going to hear all about him and Admiral Rodney will apprehend him in Kingston Harbor. And so I'm telling you people, there's nothing. So the Maroons, I give you, I remember I take you to Africa, I bring you back the young man and he becomes the St. Anne Maroon because he breaks away from the Trelawney Maroon. He doesn't agree with the Maroons because you know they sign treaties and you know the Maroons have to return runaways and a white man at some point was required to live in the Maroon enclave. So I give you the St. Anne Maroon and it's through the Maroons you will see African retention in terms of Kumina. When they need to call up the black scout to be Kalu's guide because he is going to be deported to Nova Scotia when the Maroons are rounded up, remember? And then sent to Sierra Leone. So I, the reason for writing this, remember Claude McKay gave it to me. He gave me an empty plate. He gave me a lined paper. Let me show you what McKay did. McKay, when he came to me the second time, the first time it was the plate, remember point set here, that's his poem. Second time, he gave me a sheet of paper like that. But before he gave it to me, he did this. And then he gave it to me. Do you see this? This is an A5 size. This is like a paperback, isn't it? Um, book, an A5. And when I woke up at first, I didn't know what he wanted me to do. But it took me a while to understand that, Claude, if you give somebody an empty plate, you're telling them to fill it with food or something, isn't it? If you give them a lined sheet of paper blank, you're telling them to write something on it. So this book is not, although it is using my research skills and obviously drawing on the lecturing that I've done, Claude McKay, this book is a gift to the Jamaican people from Claude McKay. And as much as I've told you so much, remember it's a womanist book, so it's written from the perspective of the colonized woman. You are living in the plantation house um, because remember it's the white elite you're looking at. You're looking at the rise of the plantocracy. You will be in the fields. So you'll be looking at the adultification of black children, you know, enslaved African children. You'll be looking at sexual exploitation and all of these things are going to be playing out. But most of all, Haiti as well is in the background because you're going to hear about, remember Cuba is 90 miles away and Haiti, remember is like, a, it's slipping me right now, about a hundred miles. So the Haitian revolution impacted in Jamaica because as you know, warships had to go to Haiti at the time to evacuate some of the French and you're going to hear, sorry, um, I forgot to turn off my phone. So you're going to hear about two French planters in the book, um, Pierre Fontaine, René Dupont. And I, oh, I'm gonna have to just turn this off. Sorry, people. Okay, it's okay. Hello, I'm sorry. I'm I was just looking, looking. and um, we need to check out uh, um, your site as well, Valma, so that we yes. can show people where to order the book. Absolutely, please. So remember though, this book, um, although I say Scotland, the Scottish sugar barons, remember this is about Britain. You will hear the importance of the slave ship when you read it, 
is because you will have all the merchants on it. When you read it, you're understanding, I'm telling you. So you're going to get a Portuguese merchant on the ship. You're going to get a Spanish one. You're going to get a Dutch one and Scottish. So there are five, I think, English. So you know they were the main powers in the Caribbean at the time, as in Brazil, yes, and the French islands and the, the Spanish island, and of course, the English as such. So as much as it says the Scottish sugar barons in Jamaica, this is Britain in Jamaica. This is about reparations for past wrongs. And it shows you, it shows you enslaved Africans being whipped and being killed and, and all my, everything is in it, plus our mother tongue. I have allowed my enslaved Africans speak in, I know academics want to say we must use Creole, but I say Jamaican Patois. And so I have allowed my, my I speak it every day anyway. As soon as I come off here, um, my mother tongue takes over. So literally anything you can think of about Jamaica, the, the Maroons are in it, but I'm not telling you that as much as I celebrate them, I'm very upfront in so that you understand that the Maroons, you know, the way in which I feel they were compromised, um, you know, just for the fact what they had to do to survive. And also the black women, when you come Seraphima in the great house, now it's no longer a great house, but this book is 23 years old. And since as I'm not in academia, I won't take any lessons from any academics because you cannot keep, I can't go through and you know erase every time it says great house or every time it says slave because it's 23 years old, it will take me forever. You understand? So where I can, I have put big house or the house or enslaved when I can, but there are times tough, it just says what it is. I'm a Sentan woman. I've been on the road now with this book for 23 years. Claude McKay gave it to me and I'm not gonna take any lectures from anybody about the language as long as it's not vulgar. Thank you. <laughs> oh, absolutely fantastic. Oh, that's such a lovely, Thank lovely you. insight. Um, no. Wow, definitely wow. So we, we can can ask you questions and talk about this. I'm just going to ask my co if my colleague Natalie Fagan Brown's actually with us just at this minute. I know she's got a family thing going on there. Natalie, are you there? Yeah. Okay. I haven't heard you. Oh Natalie. Yes, I am. Come on, Natalie, well, go on. Why everything. It was a lovely, lovely presentation. I really enjoyed it. I'm now looking forward to reading that book. Um, you've had me bubbling with excitement. Um, I'm from quite literally, um, quite near to the places you describe. I can pick out all the places you've described. Um, and I like, I like reading books that I can associate with that I can place myself nicely into the characters. And that sounds like something I'm, so I'll be looking forward to reading it. Thank well, thank you. you. So Natalie is the um, uh, course leader of a course that we did on Jamaican language and culture that was accredited in the UK, in Birmingham. So that's a, a real accolade to Natalie and, uh, and uh, speaking Jamaican is something that we recognized along with um, all the other languages. They're the most modern languages in the world. So as I've got some thank yous here in the chat, Lumley is saying, um, thank you very much indeed for the lovely presentation. She can't wait to get hold of a copy of the book. Mm -hmm. Lumley, you're, you're happy to to um, come in and talk if you like. Depends how, um, well, I'm just fascinated by um, the, uh, the thoroughness of the history that she has put there. It's, um, it's one of the best ways to actually get people to know about the past. Most people will not set out to pick up a history book, but if, uh, uh, but they'll read novels, you know, and, and, and the fact that she's put so much effort into putting so much history to it is something that I find most fun. It's what I try to do with my writing as well, you know, and I admire you, 
your work. I can't wait to 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 get my copy. I hope there it's uh, is it available on Amazon. Will be. Listen, COVID has caused a number of things I'm not going to go into. Last week was drama, touch and go, whether I was going to go ahead with the Zoom because, you know, the production line, people started dropping with COVID and I thought, I can't cancel this Zoom. So oh. hence that date that you've been given. But it will be available on Amazon and um, also in Waterstones as well as obviously on woman's view, but I'm mindful of what Garvey said. I cannot find the quote, so anybody who can find it for me. He talks about owning the means of production because we've got to, you know, do I this totally publish agree. for ourselves. Yeah. And not only do we need to do this for ourselves, we have to inspire the younger generation. We have to leave a legacy. And they Come closer. Oh, okay, we have to um, do this for ourselves, but we also have to leave a legacy. We need our young people be to understand publishing as well, because publishing is often white, male, middle class. Yes. I say this in the sense that there are gatekeepers. Gatekeepers decide what they publish. Nobody in the last couple of years wanted to touch slavery. Even now you're hearing since George Floyd, you've noticed, have a look and see the pushback that's going on in terms of education and history and decolonizing as such. So we can't hang around and wait on publishers. We have to help ourselves and show our young people. We are business people. My grandmother Higlered, we call it Higlera because from the hills up there, right? In Kellett's market, in Coronation Market, we call it in Kingston, in St. Anne's Bay Market. I walked up the hills of St. Anne's with her with a basket. You remember those bankra or the grips, those brown grips on her head? And she had her little notebook where she would, she was a businesswoman. My grandfather had an oven. My father was a dentist. And so, you know, and he had his own business. We have to create something for our young people. We can't have them sitting around applying for jobs that they're never gonna get. And so we gotta teach them something. And so hence you can see what I'm doing, yeah? It's, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And it's great that Bon Me is uh, with us and, and talking with you. She's um, a well-known uh, author um, from uh, Nigeria. Um, bon Me, you may want to talk a little bit about what you've written, um, but she's also, um, got two online um, activities, the Sankova Pan-African series, which is fantastic. And she records and posts um, most weeks. So um, that, uh, that's um, incredible. So Bunmi, did you want to add anything else? Um, just that I, I agree with so much of what, um, what the good doctor just said. Uh, it, it's one of the reasons why I actually started the um, Sankofa Children's Books website. Um, I, I'm not getting, we're not, we don't have a, um, enough story, out of our stories being written uh, for our children. And um, the platform is actually, at the platform right now, I post my own stories, but I'm inviting people, other people who are writing children's stories to, to you know, to bring their things there so that we can always have a, a good collection, a good wealth of stories. And the earlier our children start knowing about her stories, the, the, the stronger they become. So we actually even have a history section. Uh, uh, the, we call it the story of Africa for kids. And it's not just uh, uh, stories about Africa, but the African um, uh, diaspora. So I'm really, really excited. I'm even going to look out your children's books um, to see if I can get them for my grandkids. Thank you. I will look out for them. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. And um, we're going to be uh, an exciting project, which uh, you all might be interested in, is we're going to be working with Vivian Crawford and the um, junior um, department. I can't remember the exact name. Um, uh, junior Centre Institute the of junior Jamaica. Section, yes. Um, so that we can bring... Um, or create um, some training for the uh, for the children in the diaspora, um, and just listening to your fantastic book, 
um, I'm just thinking that we have got the most incredible potential training resource there. Um, and I can see that that could work very interestingly. And I've seen your, your clapping, Vivian, um, because we're talking about how to share, how to share information. And, and it's not just for the Jamaican families and the Jamaican children in the UK, but white people need to know our history. And especially you talk about Scotland. And I'm fascinated. I, I was just looking to see if I could find the copy of it. But apparently, well, there is this magazine called Scottish History. Okay, it's on sale here in Australia. So I bought a copy at great expense today because it has an article on Glasgow's role in the slave trade. So to see a black history story in a historical magazine just shows that there is a little progress happening. And certainly in Scotland, they are taking, you know, there's David Alston and so many others who came to your, your launch, including Professor Sir Geoffrey Palmer. So that was incredible. Um, so uh, yes, really, really good to hear that. Um, and I just think historical fiction, I can just imagine there are going to be characters that really hook you into the, the, the understanding the story and hearing some of those names and Thomas Thistlewood. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, Liz, before I forget, come in. Remember, I spent a lot of time in Scotland walking up and down Merchant City where the, if you like, sugar barons. So I will be speaking. One of the reasons for going to Scotland, I've worked in schools in Scotland outside of Glasgow where they don't see any black people and you turn up, you're the only black person in a sort of village. Taxi drivers, wherever you go in Scotland, because I'm a climax. The hotels, when you stay, say, oh, McClymont. Well, they're actually saying, but you're black. And so I have to give people in Scotland all the time a history lesson. So I will be going up to Scotland. Stephen Mullin, I think, is his yeah. article. Obviously, I went on the um, walking tour with Stephen and sort of hijacked it. I always do that in Scotland because you have to hijack the speakers. When I say that to say, hang on a moment, this is what happened in Jamaica and Scotland owes Jamaica because check the phone book in Jamaica or anywhere, the amount of Scottish surnames. And so Scotland is the place where I'm looking forward to going to. But you may remember, Liz, that I mentioned that over 200 copies, the paperback, will be going to Jamaica. Before, um, we've done the research, I think it's 167 high schools in Jamaica. So each high school will get one. There are 14 parishes. So I think there are 14, cent, call it central library. Each library will get one. Obviously the Garvey Library, St. Anne's Bay where I'm from, will get more because I've spoken there more than half a dozen times because we have, this is about reparations, this book. And if there's going to be a referendum in Jamaica coming up, those young people are going to be eligible to vote in two years time, if, if they're 16, I think it's 18. So we want them reading this book before it comes to any referendum. So they understand why we're asking for reparations for their, you know, for past wrongs. So I just thought I'd let you know that. Thank you, thank you for that. Now, I know you, you've got your hand up. Hello, thank you for that book. Um, the years you spent researching and doing the work, that wonderful work, God has sent you, whatever religion you are, or, or we all are, bless you, bless you were you. sent to do that. Um, my, I've got several things on mind. My thing about enslavement was always about the women, those young women, who were enslaved on that ship. We talk about slavery, but not differentiating between the genders. And in visiting the dungeons in Ghana, it really got to me how strong our ancestors were. So you are standing on their shoulders. Thank you so, so much. 
Regarding Claude McKay, yes, um, you said, was he born in Clarendon or in St. Anne's? Yes. He was born in Clarendon, but he was sent to school. His brother, uh, in, Theo, was right. in Brownstown. Don't get me started. Let me be quiet. But right, McKay right. did spend some that's, time. That's all right. You've answered my question because I've always been told about, I'm from Manchester, the hills of Manchester, yeah, where, you've Manchester. Got, where you've got the Scottish and, well, because of the weather, the Scottish and the Welsh were all there. Um, the Rhodes Scholarship was started from there. And there's a lot of history there. And you've I've switched off over the years because I got tired of talking about enslavement. And that it's it's as if you've taken, you're just God sent as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And uh, given that talent to do the book, right? When I read uh, when I read of Thistle's Thistlewood's account. Mm of what took place in Jamaica or what he did and what my ancestors went through. I cannot be angry because anger is a waste of energy. It's to use it positively. And I use it positively to support others. My last, my question is, I've heard you talk about the book, but you haven't said the price and how can we get it? Right, there are two prices. It's going to be my next bedside reading. <laughs> yes, yes, there, there are two prices. The hardback is fifteen ninety nine. It was, but we, we've had to think about it. And it depends on where you are for postage. So it's five pounds um, for postage. Um, wow. The paperback is nine ninety nine, and that will be four pounds. But as I said, <laughs> Jamaica, um, hopefully by August or so, um, Jamaica will get their copies. I want you to know my husband is from the hills of Manchester, Bombay. McClymonts no, are all no, up there. No, he's not. He's not. Is the no, from Bombay? <laughs> Bill right. Morris is I'm from, from Bel Belfield. Belfield, Davidson. <laughs> Davidson. Yes. Davidson, Davidson. Yes, Davidson. I know those places. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the school I would like to have you talk about, the high school, my school is Belfield Government School, and we've got a beautiful school that was built recently, and I'd like some copies to go there. I, I support would. them. Yes. I would. I, it's wonderful. Can you are believe you, it? Are you married to Bill? No, 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 Bill, oh, Bill. So, no, no, sorry, no, my this husband. Is the, this, is, this is the platform for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> husband's father uh, is a McClymont from Bombay. So I've spoken at Bombay's um, all-age school. Bill Morris yes. went to Bombay. And Bom there are lots of McClymonts in Clarendon. But you see, you're bordering right on that um, bit there in the right. hills. Ma um, <laughs> I'm one of those, I'm one of um, Bill's parents' generation, the Windrush. I came in 57 as a young child and they were there for us. Bill, Bill's parents, my parents, and so many in that community in Birmingham who supported few of us. Yeah, and I, I, I'm so grateful for the that generation, regardless if you say Windrush, because I saw what they went through. Yeah, thank you. I, offline, I will <laughs> say more. Yeah, right, I would so like much. to order some books. I'm coming to you next, but Ina, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. I'm really glad that you're going to join us because over the next few weeks, we are going to kind of hijack black, um, black history conversations because we're going to focus on the Windrush story and the Jamaican link. And we're just going to do all our sessions. I've talked to um, June Elizabeth about it, but we want to have some different stories. Now, for people right. like thanks, me and others who join us, I'm sure thanks, they'll be interested to hear. Thanks to June Elizabeth for inviting me. Thank you. Well, she's wonderful, isn't she? So we're, hopefully we'll, we'll get more people, um, June Elizabeth, if you can get the word around your networks. and. Um, I do hope as well that we may be able to invite you back again, perhaps, um, uh, Vilma. So, Vivian, Thank you wanted you. to come in with a comment, question. Thank you very, very much, Liz. 
um, I want to thank in a very special way, Dr. Vilma for this incredible contribution to the intangible heritage of the world. This is a must read, not only in Jamaica, but for other places throughout the world to know about human endeavors. And this book could be the tonic to help us to make planet Earth a better place. I want to very quickly declare that I am descendant of Maroons from Moortown, Portland, Nanny, who would make us realize that the Britannia ruled the waves, but they could not rule the bushes. So the strategy <laughs> in that, and also Lord Bill Morris, I know very well, he was our chancellor at the University of Technology, where I was co-chancellor. Yes. And through him, I was able to get a fellowship to England to visit um, universities. But when Dr. Vilma spoke about Robert Burns, not many people know that in the mid 18th century, he was to come to Jamaica. To oh, um, my own parish, Portland, to his cousin, Dr. Douglas. <laughs> yes. And his book, his publication was so successful that he called it what a fortune with his publication. So he did not come, should all acquaintance be forgot. Then he spoke about Thistlewood is the only writer we have about Nanny of the Maroons. How he described her, we have forgiven him for the description because we learned do not condemn what you do not understand. Do not condemn what you do not understand. And finally, the song. I used to be at UNESCO Paris as a part of UNESCO's committee for the financial and administrative efforts of UNESCO. And when I returned to London, I saw in a magazine that the following year would be a significant anniversary of the Zong massacre. And I went back with alacrity identify the place in Jamaica, St. Elizabeth, where they landed. That's the space right. is still there. It is now a restaurant preserved by a doctor because that's where when they arrived, they were bathed, oiled, and put on the oxen block. And so there's a monument there to that. Again, Liz, we cannot find words to thank you, thank you. for facilitating these discussions because we need to know. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Dr. McClymouth. Thank you, participants. Oh, thank awesome. you very thank much. You. Wonderful. Now, I'd just like to do a few practicalities, like um, what's the website um, for Women's View? Because I was just trying to look it up. It's, it's um, women's, women's view. Listen, my brain has gone to sleep. I'm having to think about it. Just type in woman, www.womansview.com and it will come up. Yeah, can you see it? And it should have give you Jama the, the colors of the Jamaican flag. It's a new website as well. So um, work in progress, but it's coming um, along. I'm, I'm just can trying you see it? to look because it isn't coming up immediately. It's coming up. No, it should do. Let me just um, remember I'm in Australia, so sometimes all I right, all right. Zoom yeah. links, it doesn't work. It doesn't work the same. And unfortunately, I can't. Um... Let me just check it. Woman's view. Um, yeah, it's there. I, it is woman's I, view. Though. I'll just show you, and I don't understand why this is happening, but I'm just going to show you what I've managed to just find. Um, is that um, this is yeah. on, on images on Google for Women's View, but I can't actually see the website. So I'm just looking through to see if the website comes up with these images. Can you see? It, it comes up when I type it in. Just type, you should just type in womansview.com. And it should come up because it just come up on my phone and I've done it in the green, black and gold. Right, just a minute. 
it's not coming up for me either. Oh, um, www dot woman's yeah. view. W -W dot, you can see what I'm doing, can you? Yes. W -W dot woman's view, spelt right, dot com. Yeah, dot com. I know I got into it before because I was able to uh, order the book. Well, so, um, the website designer, sometimes she will go offline or something if she needs to update because I've asked her to update it. So okay, perhaps that's the reason. At the moment. It might just be an anomaly. Okay, so yes, um, yes. on the website, you can order the book. Yes. Can you order the book? Um, can you get an e-copy or not? No, not yet. But not that yet. is in the pipeline. As they old time people say, Rome was not built in a day. One no. step at a time. So we're going to put it on there. Then it's going on to Amazon. And uh, hopefully next week I'm having some talks, Waterstones. It shall be in all the outlets it needs to be in. Yes. Well, I do hope that we can keep in touch with you about that because this is very much a work in progress because this is part one of a trilogy. Is the whole trilogy called Little River? No, 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 no. Um, remember, um, when you think of um, the trans transatlantic slave trade, you're talking about journey and you're talking about crossing and water. So somewhere in my head, um, there's water, perhaps water in the titles, the others to come. But equally, I want you to tell you this book is also very spiritual. I was toying with the title and I kept saying it's Canongate, if you know anything about Scotland. It's the name of a publisher, but Canongate's a very famous place in Edinburgh as well. So obviously I've walked out the whole of up there. And so I was going to call it Canongate. It's the name of the plantation in there anyway. But I kept saying, no, it has to be Little River because that's where I grew up, this image here. And the very yeah. day my grandmother died, within the hour of burying my grandmother and taking my sister back to Montego Bay Airport. I literally saw a sign saying Little River pointing. And you know, it was pointing towards what's the place, the plantation I told you, Rose Hall Plantation. Oh, I said yeah. to the driver, just drop my sister at the airport and you're coming back and taking me straight to Rose Hall now to tour out. So that's how. So uh -huh. everything about this book is something or another. Reverend Sito, for instance, taking me to Clarendon, taking me to all these places and then other things because it had to. And Ina or Ina, thank Ina, you so I, much. Ina. I want you to know that I wept when I wrote, I specifically wanted to think about um, enslaved girls and women as well. And I want you to know I wept when I wrote the chapter on the ship I wept when they, the slavers came and broke up. So everything you see breaking up, I can cry now, so I have to be careful. And I wept writing it. Um, I wept on, you know, that, sh that scene, the ship. Professor Tony Leiber said he felt as if he was living on the plantation. And you can see, I, it wouldn't take much, so I have to be careful. I wept writing it, the bits for the, the girls and the children when you hear what's gonna really happen. And also for the older, so you're gonna have the superannuated, they're called slaves, you know, those, those ones retired, but you're gonna hear about them as well, still working and you, you, you know, and women giving birth and still, you know, um, breastfeeding and taking the time off work and falling asleep on the job breastfeeding. Um, so yes, I've, I've done a lot of crying in British Library, in Barbados, in the archives, because I've been up at the university at Black Rock, if you've been to Barbados. Yeah. Oh, so I've yeah. wept in Barbados. I also up at UWE in Jamaica, because obviously I've looked at the missionaries, the role of the missionaries, the end of the 18th century and preparing the sort of enslaved Africans. So if you know anything about free, free villages and all of that. So you're gonna hear about Wilberforce. You're gonna hear about American slavery, the, the wit, you know, family. You're gonna hear about Cuba as well. All the revolutions, the every hurricane, 1780, you name it. 
it is in this book because that's why it's called the story of the Jamaican people, but it's the rise of the plantocracy and it is how they live and then the enslaved working in the background and the mini rebellions that they, you oh, know, change yes. as well. Aina, you wanted to ask something else? No, no, it's all right. Thank you. Okay, you can take your hand down if you want to. Oh, well, thank you, thank you no, so you're much. Asking the impossible. How do I take my hand down? <laughs> <laughs> right, so the website is www.womans with a Z vue.com and there's uh, Velma showing you quite rightly there and I should have because I printed out a copy of my the Jamaican order. flag you can see it yeah. it's the Jamaican flag yeah okay I'm sure sure it will come popping up again sometime may just be a, an in, interim problem I was just going to show you um this because we'll we thank you very much indeed, Valma. That's brilliant. So we're just going to take another few minutes just to, to wrap up another few things. Now, is there anybody else who wants to ask anything or make any comments to, to Vilma? There are lots of thank yous in the chat. Thank you very much indeed. June mm. Elizabeth? Yes, I just want to say a big thank you to um, Vilma. I was the first generation born in the UK. My parents come in 54. They were the first Jamaicans to marry in Northampton in 55. I was the first Jamaican born girl, Windrush girl. And I've, I, I, I look up to people like yourself and I'm so glad that um, Ina, Ma Ina. Ina, well I'm used to calling um, Margaret. Ina Margaret because so I wrote to you and said my friend Margaret's coming. This is Margaret Ina. Okay, Liz. And um, I always say to my husband, oh, you know, every time I speak with Margaret, but I don't call her Margaret, I call her the professor. I said, every time I talk to the professor, I learn so much. But I, I say it in a nice way, respectfully, because I can remember I was at, I'm sure I was at the parliament opposite House of Commons years ago, and I was a bit down. And I'm sure Ina, in, Ina told me, I need to go to this castle in Africa where the slaves was. And then when I see that, it gives me strength. I'm still trying to go and I hope to go one day. And thank you, everybody that's on here to helping me to get on because I'd given Ina the wrong number from session five. So thank you, Simon. You see, we, yeah. we didn't give up. And we got in at the right time, so we didn't miss you. I would have been really disappointed. Thank you very much. Um, thank yeah. you very, very much. And I, I, I've written the book down, and my husband will get it for me today. He will send off for it. <laughs> I get a hardback, and I get a, a softback. So when people want to look at it, they can look at it, but they're not troubling my hardback. I keep that in my library. Yes. Lovely. Thank you very much. So, two more sales. Excellent. Jacqueline Pennant, lovely to hear from you in Florida. Hello. Thank you. Appreciate um, the presentation. Definitely will be um, reading the book. Um, I just want to say thank you for, you know, all of the forums, all of, all of you, what you're doing, because for me, coming from a place of um, really having no knowledge of my history going through a crisis of identity you know like who am i what are, you know where do i come from you know just growing up in england being taught from the schools but really not knowing going to jamaica and not even understanding jamaica you know and so for me i'm going back you know reading talking exploring traveling and so for me this is really um just me and you know finding taking steps to really find out who am I? Where am I from? And this is one of those instruments that's going to help me on that journey. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, one of the things, Jacqueline, after you talked on the, uh, we had the Black History, sorry, North Wales Jamaica Society session, and we were talking about penance. Um, and um, you were saying about the need to, to learn, to be able to study about Jamaica. So I've been talking to Vivian Crawford about that and the idea of creating um, a course so that people can learn 
because you were saying how can you learn about the different places in for example North Clarendon we were talking about so thank you for your input and it is making a difference about how we're thinking and the discussion so that's great isn't it okay so um uh, I just want to um now move on then Velma thank you so much when we finish the recording we can carry on talking but we won't finish it for a moment um Marcia asked does anybody um know a book of a book called Hidden Trades Yes. You, know, you look it's, a bit quiet yes. at the moment. You know of it, Ina. Um, is it written by a professor from University of West Indies? Uh, okay. I think uh, Shepherd, um, Dr. Shepherd. Vereen Shepherd. Yes. The professor Vereen Shepherd. Yes. Is is that right, um, Vivian? I don't I don't know of the book, but I know Professor Vereen Shepherd very well. She's from Fraser Wood St. Mary. Right. <laughs> she did her doctorate at Cambridge. Yes, I think. Give me a moment and I'll check my library. It's one I haven't read. I bought it in Jamaica, but I haven't read it. Right. I'll have okay. to check it. Thanks for that then. Then next I'm going to show you that I bought this magazine today in oh. Australia. Okay, at great expense, I have to say. Um, but I was so fascinated, A, that there was a book called History of Scotland, because you couldn't get a magazine saying History of Wales, or to my knowledge, History of Northern Ireland or Ireland. But the bit that really intrigued me, now this, this challenges me, is this slavery, ooh, slavery legacy. Slavery legacy, please. In, in Glasgow Southside. So just looking at this, there's about four pages of it. So it was too much to read in the shops. So that's why I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm there to give it away. So I thought it was fascinating though, that it's legacies of slavery in Glasgow's South Side. And it's really written in a very understandable sort of way. So I thought I might, I thought I might photograph these four pages and I can post them. Oh, plagiarism. <laughs> Please send me one. Well, yeah, so, so you can have a look. So that was good. Now, That's a part um, of the reparation. Yes. yes, absolutely part of the reparation. So I'm just going to um, oh, see where it's disappeared. To. Oh, yes, here we are. Just sharing the screen now, just to, to do a bit of a catch up on the other things that are, are going on um, over the next little while. So um, next week we'll be starting the, um, the session and we're hoping to do something on Tuesday, even if it's just a phone call with you, Vivian, to recognise the Windrush departure. We'll see how that goes. Um, unfortunately, the um, British government um, Wind Windrush Fund for England, they still haven't announced whether they're going to provide the funding or not. And because our project starts earlier than the normal Windrush day, um, because we want to look at the wind at the departure. So this is what we've put in to, uh, to fund. So exploring our stories, commemorating the safe arrival of people from the Caribbean with an online celebration. I've put when when yeah Wednesday twenty second of June is the actual day, um, and the re funding requirement was that you did something on that day with poets and musicians from the Caribbean community. Um, and I've got another project as well through Learning Links International. That's about Jamaican poetry, but we can talk about that again. So this project, Exploring Our Stories, the Windrush Project, is managed by Learning Links International and will explore the stories of the departure of Empire Windrush on the 24th of May, 1948, from Kingston Docks, because next year it's going to be the 75th anniversary, right? So we're telling the stories of those left behind you spoke of that, um, Velma, um, and those who returned and developed new educational resources with interviews and talks on the weekly sessions of Black History Conversations. Um, and as I said, we're preparing for the 2023 Windrush departure, um, 75th anniversary. So um, we're going to run this anyway, whether we get the funding or not, but we won't be able to obviously do as anything like as much. So I've written off to them again and um, hopefully you might hear positive things. Okay, so um, that's, uh, that's that one. Um, 
just to say that on Wednesday, um, it is the anniversary of George Floyd's death. Um, and I'm sure that there will be a lot of coverage, but it's also interesting to recognize how much has happened over the past two years. And watching here from Australia, um, it's affected, um, uh, well, there's been a lot of um, work here done by the Aboriginal communities and others, um, as well as in so many other parts of the world. And it's really interesting to hear how, for example, libraries and universities, communities have, have done things um, in this past two years. Okay, so things that are coming up. Um, we've got this um, on Saturday, June the 11th. It's called Repairing Histories. And it's a free Zoom online conference covering global African and British African history framed around the um, British and international histories of Marcus Garvey and Claudia Jones, presented by academic and community historians with a plenary for audience engagement. Um, so um, if you want information about that, either do a screenshot or I'll, I'll send you this slide. Um, all right, Birmingham City University um, are having an amazing month working towards decolonializing HE with the rest of the sector at Birmingham City University. Um, don't forget to sign up for the closing round table on Thursday the 26th of May. So a lot of things going on there. A lot of projects on decolonializing the curriculum and decolonializing the HE sector or whatever, whatever. I think really we need to decolonialize the British. I think that would be a good start. <laughs> All right, okay. And um, on TV last night, your your time last night, um, there was a BBC One program called Subnormal, a British scandal. And this is a scandal about the um, uh, children in schools in Jamaica, in Britain who came to Britain who were or who were born in Britain who um, ended up in special education um, a really uh, I'm sure that that program would win good did anybody see it no nope. okay. okay and finally what a strange world we live in but what a, an interesting cartoon and I think I very much appreciate Vivian that you you bring such a positivity and so many good stories when you, you're joining in our sessions um, and um, and this awful story about deportation to Rwanda interpreted as poor little Paddington bear there so right that's my this week's little collection of things so um, what I do now is I, I switch off the record if I can manage to do it um, um, and then we can chat afterwards. But thank you very much, everybody, for the participation. Absolutely brilliant. All right. Okay, so I've switched off and it's gone on to the Sorry, I have to run. Okay, bye I then, bye. The work. Yes, God bless, thanks. God bless. All right, and see you next week then. Good. Talk to you over the weekend, perhaps. Bye. Let's catch up, Vivian, please. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Wonderful, lovely. Okay, well, that's really good. So uh, I do hope we can go ahead with them. Um... Oops. All right, here we are, here we are. Stop recording. I managed to stop recording now, but it still says recording on mine. Oh dear. Well, we'll just switch off in a minute anyway. Is there anything else you want to catch up with, June Elizabeth? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if you you could just tell me about the round table. I couldn't get the details. Would you just send it to me on an uh, email? Yes, let me yeah, just Birmingham check. City. On, um, I think you said the 26th. Yeah, I'll just cut and paste the whole lot and stick it in an email. Is that all right? Yeah, that'd be fine, thanks. Yeah, um, just put that in for you. So was there was a session last week? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if the I sent you... The recording will be up soon. Okay, um, I said my apologies, I was in Marbella. 
yes, yes, I, I did hear yeah. it. Right, I agree. Alf Gully. Right, I'm just um, doing that. That's all organised and sent off to you. Thank you very much. And um, maybe I missed because my husband was calling me. What What's happening next week? Um, right. What's happening then next week? Let me just go back to this here slide. Um, and just share the screen and just go through that again with you. What we, we're doing uh, is that we're talking in the Black History, the Black um, History. I'm sorry, it's it's quarter to one in the morning here. It's got quite spooked. Yes, see you, Natalie. Black like, like History Conversations next week. So we're going to be talking about the Windrush departure from Kingston um, and hopefully uh, start um, exploring the Windrush story. And I'm really, well, I think it would be interesting to hear some of the stories. So we wrote for some funding, but because the British, the English government still haven't um, announced who's got funding or not, we don't know mm. whether we've got the funding um, but we're going to go ahead anyway we're doing the black history conversations because these are non-funded we we fund these out of our own time and our own organizations and we very much appreciate the speakers um, so um, what we want to do though over the next sessions from next friday through to 24th of june um, will be to share stories of organizations and individuals who who've been involved in the whole windrush story is that okay? Thank you. So Thank what you. I'd like to do though is to, you know, engage you, find out what you might like to do. And Ina, it sounds to me as if you've got all kinds of stories that you might like to, to share. Yes, yes. <laughs> Where do I start from? <laughs> well, I'll start in on arrival here, yeah. So would you like to have time in one of our sessions? Sometimes you get a few more people, sometimes we don't. But it's a chance for us to, to talk together at times about things and, and, and to have, have different people who perhaps not, not publicly told their stories before. Yes, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. So were you, you, were you born over here or did you come over here? No, no, I was born in Jamaica. Right. Um, yes, and arrived here and went to school here, finished school here. Yeah, so it's, the, it's going from the 50s, um, what it was like for a child in the, in the 50s. So yeah, I'm because there were very few of us. There were very few of us at, in during the fifties um, of school age. Yeah, having come from Jamaica. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, it would be really interesting. Would you be uh, prepared to talk with us next week as we move on with this? Too so too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> yeah. now, you, the following week, you could you could ask us. Yes, you could ask questions. Um, yes. Because I like to engage people who want to engage with Black History Conversations. It's wonderful uh, Velma's joined us. And I would like to see uh, us having a, a discussion, Velma, about linking with Women's View, because um, I'd like to promote what you're doing um, and also, you know, learn from what you're doing um, as as we move towards because we're trying to think how can we we've done 70 of these episodes now really wow <laughs> just well, kept over going the last it. two years over the last two years because you're weekly are you weekly weekly oh no oh. i couldn't manage it well with writing no, and you everything can't manage it that, that we're not expecting you to join every week but no no, no i meant on woman's view as much as i want to be able i can only do monthly because in between, you know, grandmothering as well. You know, there's just the time. Well, it's good to know, Velma, that you've got a life because I've spent two <laughs> years here without a life. We've been in lockdown for, Melbourne was in lockdown for the longest time that any place was. And 
and we still have COVID as a really serious issue in our communities here. So I, I, I felt very, very lonely and I wanted to try in Black History Month 2020 to do something that, that reflected the um, overt concerns of Black Lives Matter and Simon and I and um, David Alston from Scotland, we've been talking together because we normally did a North Wales Black History Month conference and Simon was coming to speak and he'd spoken before and we did updates on people working on Black History projects and I'd been speaking to David Alston on other issues um, almost quite by chance made the link with him and he's just fantastic and an author is wonderful um, he's written a book called Ina I don't know if you would know it um, it's called Slaves and Highlanders no no I haven't it read is it, it is really really interesting and Slaves. About could you discussion. repeat the title Slaves and Slaves and Highlanders and it's um can you see it and it's uh, by david alston and he is a, a community researcher but he you know he's an academic oh look Ina, look, Thanks look. An email. he was hoping to join um today but for you know other no, reasons he couldn't manage it. Oh. It. yes can you yeah. spell can you spell his surname a l s t o n Alston, okay. Alston. So we started all this off and then there were five weeks in October 2020. So we did five weeks and we all talked about the projects we'd been involved in. Simon had been involved in looking at the story of um, George Africanus in Nottingham because Simon works with refugees and asylum seekers and so he gets money and they get involved in the projects. Um, and he's also worked on the story of David Livingston. He's also going to be working now on the story of the Africans who helped David Livingston, because we've realised that's a more, well, he's realised that's a more appropriate thing. So we got to, and we'd done um, the story of the African Institute in Colwyn Bay, because I'm based in North Wales normally, Velma, so... Um, and, and I talked as well about the Penance Project and I talked as well about a project we'd just done on the use of Welsh wool called Negro Cloth or Welsh Plains, which was used to clothe the enslaved on the plantations um, in the Caribbean, also bartering of Africa. So we've, we've done that. And all these sessions are recorded. They're, it's a bit of a jumble, our website, I have to say. It's not organised like yours. Um, and um, and then, um, so that was the three of us. And so we talked about what we'd done, invited different people along. And then um, we decided to keep going for another few weeks until Christmas. So that was season one. So I invented this term season one and said, do you want to keep going in January? Because quite clearly I was still going to be in lockdown in January. So I <laughs> just kept going, <laughs> kept going. So we just do it like, terms we do 12 sessions in a term sometimes it was a bit longer but we've invited authors like yourself authors and um, bun me often joins us and her, her work's really interesting um we had alex renton who wrote blood legacy do you know that yeah no no he's really interesting because he's he's a descendant of a plantation owning family and he's um pushing forward for um except um, reparation. We had Helen Papworth who's written a book called uh, The Butterfly and the Bee, um, which is about the wife of Henry Morgan. Um, and we've talked when we had uh, Charlotte Williams talking about the Welsh uh, uh, involvement in uh, Black history in the curriculum. So we've done all sorts of things. So I just sort of find some idea and email people and hope they'll turn up so um, we've done really very well over the time but really um i think because we've been going a long time i think we, we're trying to look at how to make it more effective and if we have like a really special speaker like you you know maybe we should have had that as the highlight of the month or something and actually had 
promotion of offer whatever. but it's also about meeting people and it really is a conversation because people talk across the screen i'm sitting here in australia and somebody's from canada because that's where Bummy is at the moment he's chatting with somebody in um, in ghana or, or or tanzania we had somebody last week so it's just just amazing really my sadness is and then i'll just let everybody else have a, a go as well if you want um my sadness is that i can't really involve any australian colleagues because it's so late at night when the hour changes again, it's marginally better. It's nine o'clock at night, so we might manage it, but we may have to start recording sessions um, and, um, uh, you know, interviews and then showing the recording that might work because there's a great deal of work going on here. Okay, anything else then? Excuse me, Liz. I wanted um, Margaret to tell you about her connection in, uh, with the library in Ghana. Oh, right. Okay. Ina, Ina, unmute, unmute, Ina. She's frozen. Yes. She's frozen. Oh, no, here she is. Are you all right, Jackie, in Florida? Chirping I'm here. Can you hear you me? Want to I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can I get hear. back to you now? Can't hear you now. Can you hear sorry. me now? My, sorry, um, my daughter is ringing from California. They're just waking up. My, you asked me about my contact in Ghana. When I was in Ghana, I went to the Du Bois um, Center and the curator was so knowledgeable. I was, um, I'm one of, in Krumah's offspring, because when Ghana gained independence, it brought me into Africa. And it was there before, but um, Nkrumah just was my a part of my village as a teenager. And at the Devois Center, I maintain contact with the creator. And what I do is I send books to her and she has opened a library in the village in one of her parents the family village not in Accra but out of outside Accra and has used and you takes and she takes the books there all right yeah so I just collect as many books as I can and uh, I don't send old books what I regard as um, 20 years old, I send recent books, contemporary books for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's my contact with, with that. And my question is, can we invite others um, from Canada and uh, Ghana to join your group, Liz? It's fine. We've got an enormous mailing list and we're quite happy for anybody anywhere in the world. We've changed now to be two o'clock in the afternoon in the UK so that it's eight o'clock in the morning in Jamaica. And then um, uh, Vivian Crawford joins us quite often and, and, and other Jamaican colleagues will join us. But it also means that it's not too bad in the States and um, Canada. And, and in Ghana, it's okay anyway, because the time difference isn't so great. And I yes. just stay in bed on Saturday mornings, because I we'll get to bed so late. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fine. That's lovely. Yes, do. And then if you, um, if you want to email me, I'll just put my email in the chat so you can read it as, as I'm doing it. It's just my name, which is Liz Millman. Yes. Uh, Liz Millman at... I'll find that on the computer. Yahoo.co.uk. So um, that's um, that's just coming up on the chat if you want to, to look at that. Natalie oh. said um, she sent her apologies. It was a brilliant meeting. She said a brilliant session. So uh, and we do we do record it. I hope I haven't messed about the um, and in the recording, I had problems last week and I'm still struggling here, I have to say, because on my, my screen, it says we're still recording. 
Yes, I'm going to have to jump in. Sorry, because remember I said I'm a hands-on grandmother. My grandson yes. is there. So I've got a dash, but I will be back. Please invite me and I'll definitely come. It's very interesting and I, I enjoy lovely, um, this And when you've got a bit further down the line, I'd really love to talk to you about this training because it's... It, um, as Jacqueline said, there are many people who just want to learn more about Jamaica, who've been perhaps not able to, to learn over the years, where well, it's not been so easy. So that's great. So I look forward to seeing you. And uh, June Elizabeth, how's about you talking next week? Thank you. Bye, okay, everyone. Um, bye, bye. Thank you. Bye, bye then, Thank you. Bye, bye. Either. Thank you. Bye, bye. Are you around next week? Yeah, my I, I I will be on I will be on with you next week, but I've got like a few clients just before I come on. Yeah. And when I come off. So I wouldn't be able to prepare how I want to be. I did right. say I'll let you know as soon as I'm able. Yeah, well, you know what the time frame is now. We're going to yes, run yes. In a few weeks. So I'm yes. wondering, um, I'll phone, I'll email around over the weekend and see yes. who is interested in doing something next okay. week. Okay. Um, and um, I'll call you back in a minute, Wendy. Yeah, I just to follow through. Okay, then. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Get in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Minutes. We've got a diaspora at four p.m. <laughs> haven't we? Jamaican diaspora, four to six. Absolutely. Charge up. <laughs> Bye, okay, bye everyone. Take care. Bye. -bye. bye. bye. Okay, bye. 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 Now I am going to. Right, okay, I'm going to turn off now then. Okay, bye.